great. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for coming to an 8.30 session on, I think, the last day of Ignite. I don't know. It's the last day for me. Um, but we're really excited to be here uh, to be bringing this session about inclusion to Ignite audiences. Um, I know you've been here for a couple of days already, heard a lot of things about AI um, and building with AI and all the great tools. Um, but we're here to talk about who gets to build with AI. Um, and how we can make AI development more inclusive. So um, I'm from Microsoft. I'll introduce, uh, our presenters will introduce ourselves in a second, but we've been, at Microsoft, we've been doing some great work with our friends at EY um, on making AI development more inclusive, and we're excited to share it today. So my name's Elsa Lean. I'm a principal program manager on the Azure AI team. Um, I am an Asian woman wearing a black T-shirt today. Um, my pronouns are she and her. Right. Thanks, Elsa, and good morning, everyone. By way of introduction, Heather Tartaglia. I am with EY, and I'm EY's Neurodiverse Center of Excellence Global and America's Implementation Lead. That's a mouthful, but what that really means is that I help internally at EY as well as with our amazing clients, likely many of you in the audience today, on their own neuroinclusion journeys. Uh, I'm proudly wearing an EY Microsoft uh, branded zip up today, black zip up. I have long, dark black hair. My pronouns are she and her. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our session this morning. Um, my name is David Mondello, and I'm a design researcher at Microsoft. Um, I am an Italian-American man wearing a brown jacket today, and my pronouns are he, him. Hello, 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 everyone. My name is John Franzen. I am uh, with with with. I, I, I'm 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 a supervising associate, uh, and, and and a tech tech technologist with with with, with EY's neuro 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 neurodiversity program. Um, and and my pronouns are he him. I am uh, I'm a white white visual description. I'm a white man wearing a navy blue polo. Great. Well, um, we're here today to talk about inclusion, like I said. Um, and, you know, I think inclusion is so imperative in the AI space in particular. You know, like, as we know, for the last few years, if not more, like, AI has been really changing our society and our daily lives. Um, and so the impact of it is so vast and far-reaching. And therefore, it's so important that the opportunity that gets unlocked by AI um, is something everyone can leverage, right? Like, that we design the society of today and tomorrow to include rather than exclude. Um, and that benefits everyone, right? Like that benefits all of us, not just marginalized groups. Um, you know, we can create more creative ideas if people are, uh, you know, brought into the AI economy. We can create more accommodating and more navigable products and spaces. Um, so one example that I use a lot is uh, Teams captions, right? Captions and Teams. Um, those are something that are, is so imperative for the deaf and hard of hearing to follow along during meetings and participate, but it's also something probably almost everyone in this room has used at some point um, to help make it easier for them to follow the meetings as well. Um, so Heather, what about you? How do you see the need for AI and inclusion and all those things at EY? Yeah, Elsa, thank you for that. And by the way, you'll quickly find out that I'm extremely passionate about this subject. And uh, like Elsa, I also use captions. It's extremely important as part of my day to day. But from an EY perspective, we really think about inclusion as a catalyst for innovation. So when you think about, you know, uh, disruptive technology and, uh, you know, where the world is headed from an AI perspective, the power of thinking differently is critical now more than ever. And from an EY perspective, we really focus on how can we capture all of our unique differences and strengths that we bring to really think about innovation or applying levels of creativity. Uh, and so it's uh, how do you create the psychological safety, the safe environments to tap into that level of creativity, level of inclusion, and ultimately drive, uh, drive innovation. And it's, it's not masking or shaving down those differences, but really harnessing the power of all of our differences. Um, yeah, th thanks, Heather. Um, so I know that you work at EY in particular on neurodiversity. So I wanted to start us off for the audience and just everyone with some common definitions. So could you tell us how you define neurodiversity at EY? Yeah, thank you for that. I think it's really important that we all start out with some uh, kind of standard and unifying language. And so when we talk about neurodiversity, it's really an umbrella term. It means everyone. And this really highlights that our brains all think differently, right? Our motivations, our interests, the way that we think, 
or socialize may all be different, right? And now within neurodiversity, there are two types of cognitive profiles. Neurotypical when, uh, is, is one cognitive profile, which is the um, quote unquote majority, the way that individuals kind of um, think, socialize, et cetera. And this is the way that um, society would expect, okay, uh, when we talk about neurotypicals. Whereas neurodivergent individuals are hardwired, have a permanent cognitive difference, and they think differently. And this is a beautiful thing because as I talked about a bit earlier, when we talk about how do we tap into all of our unique strengths and how do we drive innovation, it's really critical that we think differently. We're not going to solve the most complex problems if we all think the same. Uh, one other um, key piece, I, I mentioned majority. When we think about the global population, it's said to be 15 to 22 percent of the world's population is neurodivergent. Um, last year, there was new research that was shared, and it's really staggering research that the Gen Z population, this is around 13 to 27-year-olds, 53 percent of the Gen Z population identify as being neurodivergent. So that majority is now changing as you think about the workforce that's entering now for the next 10 years and our future leaders and managers. It's such a cool statistic. Like every time, you know, we've practiced this, we've done talks before, and every time you share that statistic, I just think it's so cool, Heather, because it really just shows, you know, it's not, not a minority anymore, right? And like the neuro minority that we talk about, but it's just acknowledging that everyone has differences, right, once we get to the majority. So um, please tell me more specifically, though, about what you do at EY, because I know you do some very cool work here. So Yeah, yeah, I, um, maybe I'm a little bit biased, but I think it's pretty cool. <laughs> Uh, so about nine years ago, we launched our EY's Neurodiverse Centers of Excellence, and you can see uh, on the screen here. And it was really, uh, we started with the amb ambition to uh, harness the power of thinking differently. Uh, I should say that I do not sit in DEI, I do not sit in HR or talent role. I actually come from the business side. And so we really set out to harness uh, from a business perspective and how we could drive innovation and tap into emerging technology skill sets that ultimately could solve our business problems differently, but also our clients' business problems differently. And since launching our neurodiversity program, which we're leveraging the talents of truly integrated neurodiverse teams, both neurotypical and neurodivergent profiles, we are now in 25 cities, 15 countries around the globe and expanding. So I'm super proud of that. And you'll see some, uh, some of those data points on this, uh, on this screen, but we've seen tremendous value creation, whether we talk about innovation, process efficiency, employee pride, and in a sense of belonging, which is really important. We've seen $1 billion of, of value creation for internally for our clients and our communities. Great, well, thank you for, for sharing, Heather. And so to bring this back to why we're here together, you know, talking about neurodiversity and talking about AI, um, you probably are aware that we announced the Azure AI Foundry at Ignite this year. Um, so Azure AI Foundry is our unified platform at Microsoft to design, customize, and manage AI solutions. So when our team came up with this concept, when we started working on it, we knew it was so important that anyone, any developer with any ability, right, cognitive ability, physical ability, would be able to build and leverage Microsoft's AI stack, right? We're building the tool, we want it to be the go-to tool for the AI of today and tomorrow, so everyone needs to be able to build with the AI of today and tomorrow. So the team, um, we did quite a lot of work to make sure that AI Foundry was accessible for assistive technologies in particular. So, you know, getting feedback from blind developers, developers with mobility disabilities, testing the product, finding so many bugs, fixing them. Um, and so, you know, we, we got to a place that, you know, it's always a journey, but we feel like we're at a pretty good place with assistive technology support. But we knew we wanted to go a little bit further, right? You know, that's one portion of developers out there, but as Heather was talking about, you know, neurodiversity is another area that um, is, growing, is growing, and we also think, um, quite correlated with folks in the technology sector, right? You know, a lot of the neurodivergent skills um, are things that would correlate really well to roles in building and developing AI. And so we knew that we wanted to work with EY. They've been longstanding partners in the neurodiversity space with us. Um, and we basically came together to get feedback from neurodivergent technologists on how we could improve this, um, the portal experience at Azure AI Foundry for everyone. So what I'm gonna do is show a little quick video um, that sums up some of the work that we've done and then we'll, we'll have a little chat about that after.
It is estimated that 20% of the global workforce identify as neurodivergent. I, I'm one of them. When I'm coding, the, the tools that are supposed to be helping so sometimes uh, disrupt my focus. EY is rethinking enterprise intelligence. We want to unlock the potential of every employee because we know inclusion drives innovation. We operate the neurodiverse centers of excellence globally to promote the business value of an inclusive workforce. Employees use Azure AI Foundry to create chatbots. The idea was to make sure that the tool didn't exclude anyone. I, I want to help advance neuro inclusion, so I thought this was a good opportunity to contribute. Microsoft and EY came together to brainstorm solutions, protecting users' ability to focus. The, the notifications could be distracting, and we wanted to be able to filter and organize them and make them all actionable. Microsoft product designers made prototypes and EY employees gave their feedback. The, the, the Microsoft team actually wanted our input and it was exciting to see how our feedback made the product better for everyone. Microsoft products will maximize the creative power of thinking differently and being different. It, it was rewarding to, to, to be working on this project and I'm looking forward to working more with Microsoft AI. Um, so yeah, that, that's a little bit about what we did. Essentially, Microsoft and EY, we came, we came together um, to develop Im improvements and brainstorm, and um, that resulted in the notification experience that you showed, um, that we showed in the video today. Um, the thing that I really loved about this project was being able to bring, you know, not, not just myself and the folks that are presenting today, but like re a really large number of the product team, engineers and product managers and designers who, who worked on AI Foundry together with users, right, with our developers who are interested in AI, they want to learn more about it, some of them have been building for a while, you know, we, we all came together mostly virtually, it looks more collaborative in the video, but it was such an energizing time, and I, I really think more product teams, whether it's inclusive design or, or just, you know, good design and research should come together with these groups more, more often, so that was a great experience for me, and the other thing was, um, we had such a great opportunity to learn from you on how to do so in a neuro-inclusive way, right? You know, the way that we collaborate, building pauses into, you know, our design sprint and spaces, and it really, we really had to be more prepared as well and, and you know, know that we were, what we were going to do each day because sometimes I have to admit that we, I run meetings a bit more on the fly than we, we did with, with you all so that we could prepare our participants and, and co colleagues accordingly. So yeah, it pushed us to be better. So that, that was how it was for me. How was it for you? Well, also, that's wonderful to hear. This was, we've been working on this over the past year and it was such an exciting collaboration. We really could not have been more excited to collaborate with you and, and David and, and obviously John and our broader team that is not represented here today. Uh, but ultimately, as we think about um, this project, it really aligned to EY's core principles as we think about inclusive design, and, it, and those three core principles are accessibility, usability, and co-creation. And so we were so excited that this project really aligned in thinking through those three elements and how you can really incorporate neuroinclusion and in inclusive design more holistically. So we are super proud of the results and how this is you know, ultimately going to help more technologists enter the room to drive more creativity uh, for the product. And um, it's an entire segment of the world's technologists that I think uh, will have allow for better usage of, of the product. So we are really excited about that. Yeah, great. Well, I'd love to invite David and John, and you know, John, you saw in the video, to come and talk a little bit more about you know, the details of that work and, and what went into it. Great. <clears throat> Thank you uh, so much, uh, Elsa and, and Heather. Um, and as you guys so nicely laid out, um, EY and Microsoft really approached the design process with a shared uh, understanding of the differences that people have and how that can inform uh, innovation. And so we're going to talk a little bit now about um, the specifics of how we translated some of those uh, shared values into a deep multi-month collaboration. Um, so stepping back a little bit, um, during the public preview version of AI Foundry, we received lots of feedback that the experience was uh, a little too complex. Um, so we, we were trying to think about who might be able to help us work through some of these issues of complexity, and we specifically wanted to partner with uh, neurodiverse developers who might experience the cognitive strain even more acutely than the general population of developers. 
Uh, and so by working to resolve the complexity for this one group, uh, we hope to then extend the sim the, a simpler product experience to all developers. And, and solving for one and extending to many is one of the, the core principles of inclusive design here at Microsoft. Um, so once EY came on board, it really provided a unique opportunity, an extended opportunity, to inform the broad arc of the product development process. Um, so it wasn't just involving neurodiverse developers at the start to learn a little bit more about um, where they were running into issues. It wasn't bringing them in in the middle um, just to understand, to get some ideas around how to design solutions um, a little bit better for them. And it wasn't um, at the end after everything had already been built and we're just looking to evaluate the, the product. But it was really um, stitching all those different phases together and having an, um, an extended collaboration. So it was the inclusivity was really built into the very fabric of, of the collaboration. Um, so I want to bring John in now. And John, when you first heard about the uh, opportunity to partner with Microsoft on um, co-designing the uh, Azure AI Foundry, what was it about the opportunity that, that made you want to participate? Well, two, 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 two things. Uh, for, for, first, like, 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 like you all saw, saw, saw in the video, uh, it's, it, it was an opportunity for us to, to, to talk, 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 talk about your neuro inclusion and raise awareness of it. Second, on a more personal level, uh, I, I, it was an opportunity for me to learn a, a new, a, a, a new, new emerging tech, 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 technology. This is a, just as a bit, 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 bit of background for me. I've done, a, I've done, done of, 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 of a fair amount of work with, with, with several previous emerging technologies like, like robotics process automation and blockchain. So, uh, so I, I also saw, saw this as a good opportunity to learn, uh, to learn, learn another new emerging technology. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think a lot of developers are in the same spot when, it's, when it comes to developing with generative AI. Um, so your, your curiosity and your, your clear-eyed perspective were, were really critical in helping to, to ground the collaboration. Thank you. Um, so, you know, to kick us off, um, the first thing, one of the first things we wanted to do was to get a li little bit more granular about what was contributing to the perceived complexity. And so the main question we were trying to answer was around, you know, what parts of the public preview experience were putting the greatest strain on cognitive demands like focus, uh, communication, learning, decision making, and memory. And to explore these questions, we had our co-designers from EY build a chatbot on their own over several days using the public preview version of Azure AI Foundry. Uh, and you can see here in the video some of the steps that they went through, including grounding responses in a set of relevant documents, manually and systematically evaluating the responses, and then ultimately deploying a web app. Um, after each step in the process, we had the co-designers fill out structured reflections about their experience. And so, John, I'm wondering if you could reflect a little bit about that first phase of the collaboration, and um, what about your initial development experience in Azure AI Foundry um, worked well for you? So, two, 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 two things. Uh, for, for, first, with 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 uh, AI Foundry itself, it, I, I, I found that that one, one, I found that one, 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 once I got got over the learning curve, uh, it had 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 it, it had had had. It had 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 a lot going going for it. It was very straightforward with only a, a few hangups. Uh, second is our EY developers uh, had 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 a lot of support from 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 the Microsoft uh, de, 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 de development team. Got it. So um, that's good good to hear. I was, I'm wondering if, in addition to some of the things that worked well for you, what were some of the things that um, you remember being kind of frustrating about the experience when you first started? Yeah, so yeah, so so early 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 on when, when I was start start starting to to work work on 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 my AI chatbot, I ran I ran 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 into a bro, a, a problem. Uh, uh, yes, just, just just for context, in order to set up an AI chatbot, you you, you need to uh, you need to select a region where 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 it's deployed. I didn't know that, and I kept on selecting. Selecting a region that 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 the account also had another bot there, so it wouldn't let let me set up my my, my bot, but it, it wasn't telling me enough information about what was going on. So, so yeah, so 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 I, I ended up having to talk directly with with, with the development team to to figure to to, to to figure out why why it wasn't working. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so just understanding a little bit more about you know what's going wrong and how you might be able to take practical actions about it. That's right, um, and then. Uh, 
the final thing is, you know, having gone through the process of trying to stand up your own and deploy your own um, chatbot, um, did you have a sense of like what sort of improvements you wanted to see in, in, um, yeah, in, in the foundry? Yes, uh, yeah, so, 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 yeah, so, so obviously as you might expect, um, mo mo most, mo 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 most of the improvements that I wanted to see were, were things not were, were, were things things to make make it e easier to understand, but 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 but, but also more more accessible. Uh, just as an example, going back to the 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 the, the, the region of uh, 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 thing thing I had to work through. Uh, part part of the reason why that was frustrating to me is because I wasn't getting enough information from Azure Azure from from Azure AI Foundry. That it wasn't telling me. That 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 it wasn't telling me something like, this region is unavailable. Please select a different region. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Had 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 it been told told that earlier, it w it would have helped helped me solve 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 the problem faster, and would and, and and it it would 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 have got gotten me back on track, with with build, building my AI chatbot. Mm, yeah. Um, so some of what. Uh, John is describing um, from his own experience, we heard from the broader set of co-designers that we worked with from EY. Um, and uh, some of the trends that stood out from this phase of the collaboration were that structured learning was not very well supported within the foundry. So it was really hard to discover, especially for people who are new to developing with generative AI, um, how all the various feature, uh, pieces fit together, um, specifically a lot of the different features and functionality. It was hard to understand um, a clear workflow and figuring out how all those things kind of came together. The other thing that we learned uh, at this phase was um, when we, we were looking across the different cognitive demands, and uh, we found that focus uh, was very, uh, relatively well supported. And so we knew that there were gonna be more things added to the foundry, and we wanted to ensure that that focus uh, was preserved, and the ability to focus while using uh, the foundry was preserved. And so we wanted to keep that in mind as we went to the next um, phase of the collaboration, which we'll talk about. Um, now, and that's uh, a design sprint. So we had, we had these insights from uh, our co-designers. Uh, we also had an understanding of the product roadmap and the product priorities. And so we, start, we did an intensive uh, three-day design sprint, and it was focused on three primary topics. Um, so there was one around getting started, so having clear learning paths about developing with generative AI in Azure AI Foundry. Uh, the second, and we'll talk a little bit more about this one in depth, is around notifications, and we saw that in the video. Um, so preserving context and communicating high severity uh, issues in an actionable way. And then uh, finally, transitioning between code and UI. So uh, just helping developers better understand the trade-offs of selecting uh, where they're gonna do their work. Uh, each day of the design sprint, the um, co-designers and Microsoft product builders uh, shared time together. So in the mornings, um, the, both uh, groups were present and the product builders from Microsoft had a chance to ask questions of our co-designers and also get feedback on designs in the afternoons, uh, product builders from Microsoft would iterate on based off of the feedback, and we did that um, throughout the week, finally settling on kind of three concrete design directions to start to build into uh, the product. Um, so John, I'm gonna ask you to reflect a little bit about your experience in the design sprint. I think this was a forum that you hadn't been familiar with before, and so mm -hmm. when you went into it, what were some of your kind of expectations about what you're gonna be doing? Yeah, so, so yeah, so, 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 I, 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 I knew there, 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 there'd be some, some back and forth with, with the developer team, and I knew that, that they'll, they'll be uh, taking, her, taking a lot of her feedback into uh, consideration. Other than that, I went in just, just about re 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 ready for anything. Mm -hmm. That's great, you yeah, know, and the, um, I'm also curious to hear from you um, what it was like to work side by side with product builders um, from Microsoft. Like, what, what was that process like for you? I thought it was a, a, a good experience. Uh, the the, the pro, 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 product builders, like like Dean, Dean David said, uh, they, 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 they showed me several different mockups about about how, how they wanted to implement our feedback, and they asked me for my input on, on each one of them. So it was a uh, so it was a recurring process of of of, of, of lo 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 looking at one mockup and, and, and being asked, how does this look? Okay, how, how, how does this other mock-up look? How, how do the two, two of them compare? Which, 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 are there elements here that you like better than there and, 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 and otherwise? So, yeah, so, so, so I could tell, tell that they took our feedback seriously and gave it a, a, and gave, gave, gave it a, a, a lot of consideration. Um, I'm glad to, to hear you feel that way about uh, working so closely with our, our product designers, or our product builders. 
Um, and lastly, I was wondering if um, how well you felt the feedback that you did provide um, made its way into the designs that you saw. Yeah, thank you. So, so mo mo most 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 of my feedback uh, was 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 about the notifications over troubleshooting. Going once again, going back to the re re region uh, situation I had to deal with. Yeah, so, yeah. So yes, yeah, so, so so what I wanted to see were notifications that that, that could help you f figure out why something wasn't working and get you on the right track, but also, but also notifications that didn't distract you from, from, from what, 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 from what, 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 what you're working on. Uh, some neurodiverse individuals have a hard time de dealing with, 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 with distractions like that. So now there's a, a sidebar with notifications that you can open up to, 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 to check, and, and, and um, many of those notifications are, are, are actionable. As, you know, so, so as an example, if you're trying to deploy your AI chatbot, you can just, just open up the sidebar and, and check, check, check the progress. And the benefit here is, is that if you're easily distracted, you, you, you can just wait to open up that sidebar until after you're done with your current task and then open up the sidebar and get caught up on, 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 on th th things going on in there. Okay. Um, well, I'm, I'm, again, I'm glad to hear that the, the, some of the feedback that you provided um, you saw that and reflected in the designs that we iterated on throughout the week. Um, so the, a couple of uh, thoughts about um, the design sprint and, and what we heard from some of the other participants, uh, and, and again, echoed from some of what John has already discussed. Um, but from other uh, co-designers from EY, we heard that, you know, this is a quote, seeing our thoughts and ideas evolve into practical, sol practical solutions for neurodiverse individuals was quite rewarding and inspiring. Uh, and then on the product side from Microsoft, um, the Sprint really helped underscore and personalize the different needs to consider when uh, designing AI Foundry. And you know, often researching, designing, and uh, building are done in more of a sequence, uh, kind of in isolated sequences. But in um, the Sprint, pro uh, product builders had direct and dynamic access uh, to users of the product, leading to a kind of a more parallel product development approach. Um, it also provided the space to explore uh, ideas or directions that uh, would have been maybe a little bit more difficult to do during the regular kind of rhythm of business uh, of product development. So those are some of the things we heard from uh, the co-designers and, and from the product builders that participated in the sprint. So we had these ideas coming out of the sprint, um, and we had a clear direction, but we still had to do the work of embedding the design ideas into the actual product, so putting the outputs into the product. Um, to help ensure that the spirit of what came out of the sprint actually landed in the GA experience, we had our co-designers review early builds um, featuring the improvements that they helped envision. Um, we're gonna talk a lot about notifications here. Um, but I'm wondering, uh, John, if you could describe what it felt like uh, to see something that you helped shape in, in the process of the design sprint actually land in one of the early builds. Yeah. So I, 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 I thought it was uh, re, 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 rewarding to see our, our feedback be implemented in, 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 into, Azure AI, into Azure AI Foundry. Uh, it told us that, that, that they really did take our feedback seriously. And it, 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 it was also a, a humbling in a way that they would trust us this, 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 this much with, 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 with their, 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 their product. Well, we were only able to get it to that spot with all the very uh, useful contributions that you and, and all the rest of the co-designers provided us with. Um, so in addition to the feedback that we got from our um, co-designers, this phase also featured um, insights from neurotypical developers. And what we found was our explorations that came out of the design sprint with our co-designers also prov uh, provided a more focused and actionable experience for neurotypical developers as well. And again, this is uh, addressing that core inclusive design principle about solving for one and extending for many. Um, so again, we, we talked a lot about notifications in this session. Um, it's the first of the design ideas to land in the product. Um, but other insights from this collaboration are uh, continuing to inform current and, and upcoming features, uh, including how guidance and learning opportunities show up within Azure AI Foundry. Uh, so John, I'm gonna ask you to reflect a little bit on kind of the whole experience now. Um, so as you uh, look back across all these various activities, what, what did you personally find most valuable? Um, so the first thing, uh, as, as, as uh, surprising as, as, as this, this might sound, I, th I think my first, uh, the, 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 the first thing that I, I found val val valuable was, was actually my initial difficulties in getting 
my AI chatbot work, 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 working. Uh, yeah, so just 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 for context, I'm 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 what one what I'm 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 the kind of person who can just sit down and devote a lot of time and energy into into working on something and figuring out all, all, all the ins and outs of, of, of how it works, and and in going through this, I I, I learned a lot about how AI how about how AI chatbots are are supposed to work. And then, then, then the, the 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 second thing I found valuable was was actually just just being involved in the process from start to finish. Uh, it, it was really rewarding to see how Azure AI Foundry went from what we from went went from what we had started with to what 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 it is now. Yeah, it's good. It's good to hear that you felt kind of involved throughout the entire process, and that I think you're coming away from the collaboration with some some new tools in your toolbox as a developer and, mm -hmm. and getting some exposure to the uh, the capabilities of AI Foundry. Um, so now that you're on the back side of this process, this collaboration that we did, John, uh, could you talk a little bit about um, how you see the different pieces fitting together? So when we started, it maybe was a little bit more abstract, but now that you've seen how everything kind of fits together, I'm wondering um, if anything's a little bit clearer than when you first started out. Sure. So at the start, it, it, it felt a bit like beta testing. Uh, we, we, we had some instructions on, on what to do, and we, we, we were being recorded as, as, as we didn't, didn't did those tasks for, for the development team so that they could, they could see how, how we did, how see our progress. So it, it wasn't until, until, until we started getting to the second and third sprints uh, that things really started falling into place. Uh, and, 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 and where it became clear that the builders wanted, wanted to see how we think and 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 look 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 at the at Azure AI Foundry, so that they could make it more more neuro 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 inclusive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's it's uh, good to hear the process of of co-designing AI Foundry, um, but this allowed you to kind of directly shape the experience in a neuro inclusive way, and we we're very grateful for your involvement, and continued involvement. Um, so. Uh, lastly, John, I I'm wondering you know, if, if there's others here today um, that are thinking about taking a similar approach within their own, own organization. Um, is there any advice that you would give them on how to effectively co-design with neurodiverse individuals? Yeah. So, I, so two, 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 two pieces of advice. The first one is is be willing to make adjustments. Uh, 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 as, as as has been said said. Uh, here several times and throughout 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 the, throughout several several other other events here so, so, so several times neuro 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 neurodiverse people think 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 differently and sometimes they, they have different needs as an example of this uh, several of our offices at several of our EY offices have have quiet rooms uh, with, with dim dimmed lights lower environmental feedback and it's helpful for neurodiverse individuals who who. Who, who get overstimulated? They can they can just go there, calm down, and fo focus on their work. And my second advice is 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 be, is, is list, 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 listen to them. Uh, uh, um, um, all, all, all of our developers and technologists at 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 at, 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 at EY's. Uh, Neurodiverse Center of Excellence. We all have ex we we, we, all, we all have have technology experience that that, that, we, that we brought to this project, and we all had valuable feedback that uh, that to help make Azure AI Foundry a, a better product. So yeah, so 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 just just to recap. First, be willing to make adjustments, and second, li li list, listen listen to your to to the, to your to your 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 your. your, your Neuro, 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 neurodiverse colleagues. Great. Well, uh, thank you, John, for your contributions uh, throughout this collaboration, uh, including the way you've helped us tell the story. Um, thank you. I've, I've learned a lot from, from you and everyone at EY's Neurodiverse Center of Excellence about how to expand my own research practice. Um, so thank you again for, for helping to broaden our approach to product development um, and to create more neuroinclusive experiences. So thank I'm going to hand it back over to Elsa now. I think she's going to do some wrap-up slides, and then I think we'll have some time for questions. Cool. So don't, don't worry, everyone. I'm not going to take too long wrapping us up. Um, so actually, and, and I loved, thanks, John, for sharing your two tips at the end. That really kind of, yeah, I think those were two really important points. And it kind of made me think of one that I wanted to add, which was, you know, on, on the Azure AI Foundry side, on our team, we um, had a neurodivergent developer who was part of the Azure AI Foundry team who helped us shape this uh, experience with us. So I think really having 
having folks on the product team um, who can help make sure that you know the way we're designing that co-design process was inclusive, not just from our partners at EY, but like from someone sitting on the product team made a big difference for us. So, you know, big call out to diverse teams from within. Um, but yeah, basically, my wrap up is this slide. Um, we have so much good content for anyone who's interested in doing kind of inclusive design projects, co-design at inclusive.microsoft.design. And actually, David and I pretty much use this website to figure out and plan our design sprints. Like there is, there are great resources in here. We relied very heavily on the Inclusive Design for Cognition guidebook that you can see um, on the screenshot of this webpage. So David had talked about the you know, different cognitive demands and you know, when we were doing the research with the EY co-designers, we were looking for uh, you know, issues with the demands such as learning, focus, um, memory, you know, a few others that I'm remembering incorrectly. But we, we took all of that from the Cognition guidebook and you know, learned more about these demands and how to you know, find out more about them. There's also a pretty cool little sort of like mini booklet on uh, inclusive AI. So that's another relevant and interesting one to look at, but um, big call out for the inclusive design um, assets on this website. And I think you can find a lot there on how to do this, these kind of things yourself. Love to encourage people to do things like this themselves. And, and yeah, that's, uh, that's us. Um, Final thing, you know, we're, we're, uh, we have like one more day of Ignite and there are a few more accessibility related sessions. So these are things you can attend uh, later today. Uh, and otherwise I'll pause for questions and maybe we can bring the rest of the folks up. I think we have about eight minutes. So if anyone wants to come to the mic or, or just put their hand up. Um, yeah, thank you for listening. Hi, uh, thank you for uh, explaining how your process went. Um, my question is for folks who are building with Azure AI Foundry, uh, do you have any tips in terms of how they can build more inclusively uh, using that tool? Oh, that is an interesting one. Um, I think I could have a go. Um, so, you know, uh, the, the Azure AI Foundry has a lot, like I guess the first thing I would say is, you know, Anything that you're building with generative AI, therefore with the Foundry, has such strong potential to be an inclusive and accessible tool, right? Of course, you need to make sure your UI is accessible, you know, screen reader accessible, all those things. But like, don't forget about the power of generative AI itself as an assistive technology. So there's been some really great sessions about this at Ignite earlier as well. And so I almost wonder if Anna was asking a leading question because she did a wonderful session on how co-pilots can benefit accessibility. And I think, do you remember the stat that um, EY has? And it's something like 95% of neurodivergent individuals called co-pilot and assistive technology? Was yes, that's like that? exactly right. Yeah, exactly. so like inherently anything you're building that you know, is this conversational assistive tool can help people, you know, simplify content, you know, get a recap of the meeting, all of these kinds of things are inclusive tools. So just to kind of like short answer the question, I feel like anything you do with generative AI, great potential for inclusion. And then we also have, you know, we have some multimodal abilities in the in Foundry, right? You can use our speech services, vision services, those are great places to add accessibility into anything you build as well, right? Um, generative AI can describe screens now, um, describe images, videos even. Um, you know, you can add voice to your chatbots and co-pilots and that's another great inclusion tool. So yeah, lots to be done. Thanks for the question. Anyone wants to add anything, sorry. Nope, you did a great job. Well said. Yeah. Morning. <laughs> this could be a bit of a difficult question. I noticed the chatbot removed your speech impediment. How do you feel about that? So when it was doing the translation up here, your speech came out as, a, as normal speech. It removed your stutter. Well, as for me, I'm 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 fine with that. If it helps people understand what, what I'm trying to say, then 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 I'm perfectly fine with it. Cool. Thank you. Appreciate it. Cool. Do we have any questions in the chat, Courtney, or nothing too much? We will also be around for the next five minutes. If yeah. there are no questions mm -hmm. and you want to connect separately, we're we're here. Yeah. Thank you, everybody, Thank you. for coming. Thank you. Thank you.